friends, so I'm currently in Washington DC in the US of A. I'm here for a week on a work trip, feeling massive imposter syndrome, but very, 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 very lucky to be here. And I thought this would be a great chance to kind of share again and inspire and show you guys that a bioinformatician doesn't just sit and code all day, every day. I'm not doing any coding all week, I don't think, but I'm still on a work trip as a bioinformatician. So okay, I just did that on a little touchpad. That was cool. I thought I'd make a little nice video about reasons why bioinformaticians might travel outside of their research institute and hopefully share with you and debunk some myths about bioinformatics life. So let's get into today's video. If you're new here, hi, my name's Georgia and I have worked in bioinformatics for four years now and I love to kind of dispel the myths about what a bioinformatician really does and really kind of make this field more transparent. So if you want to find out more about bioinformatics life, follow along for more videos like this. I love to travel and my job allows me to do that. So I thought I'd share with you some reasons as to why you might get to travel if you get a job in bioinformatics. So reason number one, and it's actually the most common reason, but one that I've never done yet. You might get to travel because you want to share your work. So especially if you're doing a PhD or a postdoc or a really kind of specific niche project in a group, if you want to share your work, with the community, you might be invited or you might apply to go to a conference. And you can go to a conference to share your work either by having a poster presentation or having a talk. So the poster entry route is the most easiest. So you create a poster about your work and at tech conferences, this can literally be your pipeline that you've made and some stats about how good it is. So you can go to these conferences, present your work via a poster or if you want to via a talk. So depending on where the conference is, you might get to go to the neighboring institute or you might get to go to Australia. I mean, if you're in Australia, maybe you come to the UK, but you get the idea. You get to travel to another country if you can to go to that conference. So sometimes this might be out of your own pocket um, if you really wanna go and you don't have support from work. You might have a travel bursary to go. So sometimes you can apply for a special travel bursary from that conference and they'll give you the money to fund you to go. Or if your supervisor or your manager supports you going, they might use the lab budget or the kind of department budget to send you on that trip. So kind of that's how you can do it. That's why you do it to share your work with the community. Conferences can either be kind of domain specific, so maybe you work in malaria and it's an infectious disease conference, or maybe it's just a purely computational one, so it's like broad bioinformatics, or maybe it's a really niche conference on one specific tool, like a SciPy or NextFlow, and you can go to just their conference to do just their thing. So that's reason number one. Reason number two why you might travel as a bioinformatician, you might be going to some sort of workshop or tutorial where it might happen pre-conference or it just happens anyway, but an institution will put on an event, maybe it's like a week long or three days long, and you basically get to go there and learn a new skill. So again, this could be funded by the organizers or your lab, maybe a travel bursary or whatever, but essentially you can go to these hosted workshop tutorial type things and then you can spend the time learning a new tool or technology to kind of advance your career and your skill set. So that's a really cool way why you might travel. And often these might happen pre-conference. So conferences might start on the Wednesday, but then these kind of workshops start on the Monday. So you might go before, do some coding, learn the new tool, and then either go to the conference or just go home. So kind of learning workshops is a way to travel in bioinformatics. Reason number three why you might travel, still on the conference vibe, and that's just to go to a conference for learning purposes. So this one can happen less depending on the rules in your lab, but conferences at the end of the day are designed to share science. And when you're early career, what better place to go and learn the science of your field than attending a conference. So usually if you don't have anything to present, then it's kind of easier to leverage going to a closer conference that doesn't cost as much money, but depending on kind of the budgets and what's going on in your research place and what the priorities are, you might be able to go to a conference where you're just going there for learning purposes 
or just to meet people in the field that you're working in. So attending the conference for networking reasons and for scientific learning reasons. And funnily enough, I got sent to Seattle to go to ASTMH a couple years ago and I didn't have a poster or anything. And when I first went, everyone was talking about how most people were going there to network. And I was like, what? But I just want to go there to learn the science. Like, this is so amazing. I just want to learn the science. And then I didn't really talk to many people there. And then I realized that, oh no, everyone goes to these conferences to like meet up with the community. So it really is a big thing to go to conferences to see the people in the field because that's why science is awesome. Like it's global. There's people working on the same problems scattered across the world and then they meet up at these conferences. So being able to go to them kind of really is a great networking opportunity. So that's another reason why you might travel abroad. And then finally, reason number five, which is why I'm traveling right now, and I didn't even know this one existed. I'm at a collaborative strategy workshop as a bioinformatician. So I've got like five days of doing stuff. It's not observing, it's not presenting a poster and wandering around, it's not doing a hackathon and learning. I'm spending five days coming up with ideas, collaborating, discussing, and trying to create new innovative ways across disciplines to integrate things that we're learning in research into clinical practice and connecting with clinicians and connecting with everyone in that pathway and tying up all our ideas together across our different countries and across our different institutions. So really, really cool, but I didn't realize that I was involved in this as a bioinformatician. So there is another reason why you might travel and that's to kind of give your advice, give your viewpoint of bioinformatics. And again, I've only been in the field four years and in spatial for a year and a half now. So it's really cool that kind of a lot of these programs will have options for early career scientists and bioinformaticians, that is you, um, to get you into these rooms because you do have a lot to offer, you've got a new viewpoint, you've got a young, well younger, early viewpoint and it's just a really great way to get your voice out there and for you to benefit from this wealth of experience and then bring it back to your institute. So that is another reason why you might travel um, and I'm loving Washington so far, it's really cool. And then the final reason why you might travel, no, actually I've got two more. Another reason why you might travel is to go to hackathons. So I talk about hackathons all the time. It's basically when you get a bunch of coders together for like a few days and then you just hack out coding a problem together and you come up with a solution to something super quick. So hackathons, really great way of going and usually you wouldn't really travel a long way for a hackathon, I mean you might. Again, they sometimes tag them on before conferences, but or you might travel to another institute um, to go to a certain hackathon, so definitely one to remember. And then the final one, which isn't really traveling abroad, but there's things called like co-working sessions. So we've got like a network in London where they meet up to kind of have co-working sessions with other people, but it's kind of more informal. So you might travel abroad for some sort of co-working, networking event if you wanted to, but that's essentially it. So I hope this video was inspiring, really cool. Bioinformaticians don't just sit here and code all day. We do loads of really other cool stuff. So there's loads of reasons why you might get to go travel abroad as a bioinformatician, especially if your field is kind of connected with other places around the globe. So always kind of keep that in mind when you're applying for different things. So I've been Georgia, this is Genomics with Georgia. I'm now going to something called the Spa Olympics as an evening activity. I've got no idea what it is. I'm sure I'll be bonding with the other attendees. But anyway, I will see you all on another video. Thank you so much. Bye.